Right now, 73 million people across the world have been wrenched from their homes by conflict and hunger. Behind these numbers lie stories of the profound resilience of the human spirit. Almost two-thirds of refugees come from Syria, Afghanistan, and here, in South Sudan, where thousands of people have fled conflict to neighboring Ethiopia. Goal has been working in Ethiopia for over 30 years, and today, Goal staff support four refugee camps, two in the Afar region of the Northeast, and two here, in the Southwest, close to the border with South Sudan. I'm speaking to you from Gambala in Ethiopia, where almost half a million people are living here in refugee camps from South Sudan. And I've been lucky enough to meet some extraordinary people, like this woman, Nietzsche. Nisha is 36. She lives here with her four children, including her baby, Galesh. We spoke for quite a while today about her family, about where she came from and about why she was here. Nisha told me she came here from South Sudan to escape the terrible violence there. The journey she described was just horrific. I'm in Pamdong, which is a transition camp, which is where people first arrive to before they're processed to go to the refugee camps. People walk here maybe over a day or two and arrive. It's incredibly bleak. It is like bamboo, sort of like airport hangers, dirt floors, people just living on the floor. They get two sort of porridge-based meals a day. There's enough calories there, but there are also more people outside the space living in the pure elements. When Nisha and her family fled South Sudan, this is where they came. Nisha now lives here in the Kule refugee camp along with nearly 60,000 other people, most of them women and children. In places like this, malnutrition is a constant threat. So Goal has created a special programme called the Mami programme for pregnant women and young mothers to make sure that their newborn babies and infants get the nutrition they need to survive. Thank you, thank you. Nisha says that the Mami programme has really helped her and her children, especially her baby Galette. Then Nisha told me about her other two children, the ones who didn't survive. She told me how her daughter died with a fever. She called it the emergency disease. Her daughter was just nine months old. But Nisha's was not the only tragic story we heard. Nadul lives here with her daughter and her five grandchildren. She's come from South Sudan five years ago. And I asked her what was her life like before. She told me she had a job. She worked in a primary school. She had a home. She hasn't seen her husband in five years. She doesn't know if he's alive or dead. She doesn't know where he is. And she said, if it wasn't for gold, she said, where would the food come from? 